Hi everybody. I'm excited to have a live stream today. I'm just going to invite Sophie really quick before I get this party started. Let's see. As you know, this is nervous about, so let's see how it goes. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining today. I hope you're having a happy Wednesday. It's gloomy in LA, which is my favorite weather, so I'm excited about that. Let's see. I'm going to just try this one more time before I jump into talking about the weather. Okay. Sophie, invite. Let's see if it works. This worked really well with Nicole last week. It was like, boom. Okay, Sophie's here. She's present. Um, let's see. Hi. I see the waves. Hello. Um, okay, there we go. Sorry, this, this little process is awkward for like five seconds. Sometimes it's great, and then sometimes it just doesn't work. Let's see. It says Sophie's unable to join, which is awesome, considering that this is – there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sophie. It was like, Sophie is unable to join. I'm like, this is great. Okay. Um, yeah. Perfect. The live stream with Sophie. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to be here with Miss Sophie. Before I introduce her, I'm just going to give you a quick intro. Um, this is the other account that I run. Almost Normal Productions, and I'm a producer with AMP with um, two other lovely ladies, Elisabetta and Catherine. And aside from our films, our content just focuses on how, you know, how we as artists and how the characters in our films deal with everyday human struggles that Sophie and I are going to talk about today. So um, today I have on another lovely, fabulous woman, Sophie Elise, who is my fellow actress and somebody that I've known for what, like 10 years? <laughs> yeah, I remember in Costa when we were 10 in Berlin. Yeah, isn't that, that's a story. Um, <laughs> so Sophie and I have known each other for a while and we've been wanting to do this live stream for months. So I'm excited that we finally get to do it. And um, I'll just jump right in, Sophie. Um, you kind of told me you wanted to talk about a few different topics. So um, one of them was, uh, we were talking earlier about I asked if you have always been supported in being creative as a profession, you know, like if any external factors, you know, whether it was family or friends or finance had made it difficult for you to pursue being an actress. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the way I started acting was, was kind of interesting, actually. It was, I, it, it was very expensive, obviously. Um, and so I... No, I actually, oh yeah, I started acting to pay for um, my gymnastics. And that's kind of how I, I fell into it because gymnastics was expensive. And so I was like, oh, I'll just do this for fun. And my mm -hmm. mom was like, yeah, why not? And so I, it was never, my mom never pressured me or put me into it and, or wanted uh -huh. to be in the spotlight. It was kind of just to get a little bit of money. And then um, as my career kind of started to take off, um, it was hard with gymnastics. I think, I mean, I had potential in gymnastics and so my mm -hmm. coaches kind of had a hard time letting me leave for, you know, a month or, or a week because you just lose so much strength when you leave for such a long period of time. Right. And so I kind of hit a point where um, I booked the book thief where mm -hmm. I kind of had a decision between gymnastics and acting. Um, and my mom was like, honestly, I'll be happy with either. She was very supportive. She was like, whatever you want. My whole family uh, was very supportive. And even my coaches, which was a huge relief because I felt so guilty leaving gymnastics because it had been such a uh -huh. huge part of my life. When I left, they were so happy for me. And they're like, we really wish you the best. And now sometimes I go back to my gymnastics club and they're so happy for me. And they're like, what have you been working on? And so it's nice to feel. That's that, great. You know, I kind of quit on gymnastics and yeah I mean other uh -huh. than that I feel like I've, I have always been very um supported and even now if I wanted to stop acting my mom would not be mad no one would be mad and I think what's quite nice is that I come from a background where no one is in this industry in my family and right. so I think that's what's so important is that my 
my close, the people that are close to me are very grounded and keep me grounded. Um, and I think that's just crucial and, and, and so important that whenever, that I know that wherever this job takes me, I'll always have my core people to, you know, keep Absolutely. me sane and just remind me what like my values are and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's awesome because I think that a lot of the time when I hear other actors saying in response to this question, like, no, I don't really have the best support system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been really tough. Um, I think a lot of those actors tend to leave the profession because it can get overwhelming. Like it's, as you know, because you're in the spotlight and because it's such a demanding sort of unconventional job, um, if you don't have a grounding supporting system at home, you know, in your normal life, then I think it can just become really overwhelming. And I think it just takes the joy out of being an artist and, you know, being in this like crazy kind of really, you know, lucky profession. I mean, it's like such a fun job, but, you know. We, I mean, we've been pretty lucky, but we've had also period, periods of time when we weren't working as much and it's very like worrying when you're not, when you don't have a, a job lined up. You're yep. like, how long is this going to go for? And so, and we have been lucky to been working since we've been so young. So I, I understand as, you know, a close friend or a, as a parent or as a partner, how if, you know, you know, someone that wants to, you know, hop into this business and they're not booking and it's been a couple of years. It, I mean, as a friend, you're kind of like, it's hard to give them advice because part of you wants to help them and, and, you know, be supportive and do whatever it takes for them to succeed. Mm -hmm. But some part of you is also like, it is money. It is like an investment to either be in LA or, you know, whatever you decide to do or to like right. for all these self tapes or, and so I think that it, you also sometimes there's like a more rational side to it when you're like, well, maybe you should think of going somewhere else. And so I've been lucky to have been very supported even when I have down periods of time. But um, sure. yeah, it is. I understand both sides of the metal, I guess. Yeah, I no, I, I completely get that. I think at least for me, that's why I like because acting is such a and it's such an unstable gig, you know, you could be working for a year straight and then not working at all for a year and you can't predict that. So I think for me, at least like um, having things that I'm doing that are creative outside of acting, not, not as like a backup plan. Cause I, ha I hate that. I hate like saying you have to have a backup plan as an artist. Cause I think it, it can be really defeating, mm -hmm. but I think just saying like, what else do I like to do so that I don't mm -hmm. feel defeated when I'm not working and I'm not waiting around, but I can actually have control over my own life a little bit, um, I, you know? I, I've, I've, I mean, I've always had school, and it wasn't mm -hmm. so much back of plan, but I, if I'm, to be at home, I enjoy learning. I enjoy doing things, and, and mm -hmm. now I've I finished my um, semester, but I still want to take, like, online classes or singing classes or yeah. like, whatever to keep my brain active and to always be learning, even if it's not, even if it's not in the field of acting. It could be photography. It could be politics. Yeah. Be, I like dancing. Maybe I'll take dancing classes. So I think it's like anything that keeps you busy and keeps your mind going and active, I think is, is just good. No, I agree. Um, and then, so I guess be like when you are working and when you are on set and, um, or I guess, I guess this can apply whether you're on set or just in a workplace in general, but that is your general workplace. Um, what's been your experience, um, asserting yourself? Like, has it come naturally or have you found it difficult to stay, you know, true to you and express, express yourself without, you know, without getting nervous and kind of backing yeah. down? I mean, I think I do, I do stay like, I stay myself, but I do think it's hard sometimes, especially because I started so young. Um, mm -hmm. And my mom was often around when I when I started and she still is sometimes. And so just like little things, if I'd be, you know, random things like shy to go ask something at Crafty, she'd always go for me. Um, right. And just little things to help me out where I was too shy, she'd do it. And so now I've been working on doing it on my own. It is hard. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I think it's important. I think it always has to be in, in you know, um, to do it in like in a respectful way. And as long as you do it, you, you know, you're doing it out of like good intentions, I think is what mm -hmm. I to like remind myself like no one can get mad of you if it comes from a good place um but it has been 
hard sometimes because there's so many people on set. You don't want to like disturb anyone else. You don't want to, you don't want to take too much place. You don't want to, I mean, especially on this last show, it was my first time working on a TV show. I'm more used to mm -hmm. doing films. Um, and I found that the number of takes were so minimal. And often I felt like I'd finish a scene and I'd be, I'd finish very unhappy with my performance. And, mm -hmm. um, as I only got one or two takes. And so I've been learning to kind of try to say, hey, maybe I'd, I'd like another take, but it's so awkward to do, and you know, when you're standing in front of the whole crew. Yeah. You want one more and it feels very like selfish often um, or yeah, self-centered, I guess, um, to be like, I wanna, I don't know, but it's important if you don't feel happy, like they have mm -hmm. their jobs and this is, this is your job and your face is on screen. And I think it is important that you finish the day being happy with what you did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. but it hasn't like some days I've been good at it and I was like I would like another one and then sometimes when I felt like we were too much in a rush I'd be like okay it's fine I'll just, just go back yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. how's it been for you because you I mean I've always been very impressed on how you hold your own and oh how my god you speak always so beautifully and like <laughs> you're very eloquent when you speak so oh thank you well you too I mean we've we've both been in the industry kind of the same amount of time, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we met literally like through an auditioning process. Mm -hmm. So I think, but I think, well, there was a couple things that you said that like kind of resonated with me and that I've heard from other actresses that have been, that started as, as child actors. Um, Cause you said that you were used to having your mom on set and that because you started as a child actress, it's kind of been an adjustment being an adult and having to be on set by yourself. And I've heard, other actresses say that like I started so young that when I became an adult it kind of felt weird that I had the authority to assert myself because I didn't really know how to use it um and then also you know what you said I don't even know if you like if it was like conscious or not but it was interesting because I feel like you know being women in film especially now that I'm behind the camera and I've had to assert myself in a different way aside you know outside of acting and you were saying how you, you always want to make sure that you're respectful and that you're not disturbing others. And I feel like that is a quality that more commonly women tend to carry, which is like not wanting to disturb the peace and wanting to make sure that you're not perceived a certain way. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't say that in any way of like separating men and women and that, you know, men can assert themselves better. But I think that when I talk to a lot of guys that I know, they're like, like they, they don't just, they just don't relate with that struggle. Like if they have something to say, they feel right. like they can say it and they don't have to worry about how it's going to come out because it's, mm -hmm. if they're not innately like disrespectful, you know, but I think that mm -hmm. women naturally go, oh, like if I say something or if I ask for something, like are people going to get upset? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's interesting because I've, you know, I've also dealt with that being on set and being like, oh, like, should I ask for another take or you know, like, like, can I ask for this thing? Like, is it, is it going to upset somebody? Am I going to, you know, seem kind of conceited? You're to assert yourself now that you're more behind the camera or? I mean, yeah, I think that I'm, I think that I'm learning to go. That's, that's, that's not true at all. Like, is like you said, as long as you're, you're being yourself and you're, you know, I think you and I are both relatively like respectful polite people <laughs> so as long as you're just nicely asking for things you know and just saying like hey I'd like this or can we try this I I don't see why why that wouldn't be allowed and it should you know it should be but I think it's interesting that you said that because I think it's definitely a female quality yeah you know at least in my experience um, I'm directed by you I think we'd make a great team I think we'd make a great team too I mean look at us we're talking right now so it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I've been seeing a lot of questions come in, like, on the – I want to see what we can uh, address. I'm sorry, you guys. Everybody's been, like – I think I saw one question that um, was really cool, and I wanted to ask, but I, I lost it. So uh, let's see. Someone asked – I do remember earlier that somebody said that they have, have started acting classes at school, and they wanted to know if we had any advice, but I'm going to hand that question over to you. Um, I personally ne have never taken any acting classes, and um, it's actually in the course of the last year when I when where I started thinking maybe I, I should because I kind of thought that acting classes would take it would take away the 
natural thing I get I had going on or like my basic in instincts that I didn't want mm -hmm. to like overplay or whatever in and I find that on this last project especially it's been so interesting watching the other girls um how we're, we have very different acting styles and how some of them use their yeah. body more and some of them it's more in the facial expressions and um and so I do I, and now I was like okay I think I actually want to maybe take acting classes and see where else I can yeah. go Kind of like I think I'm very stiff when I when I do acting. I think that's my biggest issue. I feel very really. I don't know what to do with my arms. Like I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> I never know what to do with my arms. Three, like the three basic like this or like this. Uh -huh. I don't do anything that's different. Like if I put my hand in my hair and then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's so obvious. Yeah. Um, and so I think yeah, I'd like to try to just see what it could what it could bring me. And I mean, for any advice, I mean, I don't think I'm um position in a place to be giving advice right now because I'm, I'm still learning and I have so much to learn still um but just I think trust your instincts I think whenever I've had I've been coached sometimes or mm -hmm. I've been told to do a scene a certain way and it just there's a difference between not it not feeling right and it being out of your comfort zone I think um sure. could, you can try something new and it could feel a little weird but I think at the end of the day you know yourself and you know your work and you know so i think just trust your instincts i guess yeah absolutely and i mean like you just said you're like i'm not in a position to give any advice i mean you know it's obviously you are because you know even even if you haven't had any sort of traditional training or even if that's something that you're just getting into i mean you know you have your own ways that you've you've learned to navigate acting and, you know, how to be on set. And I think that what you said, which is that we're always learning. I think whether you've taken 20 years of acting lessons or not a single one, you're still learning, yeah. you know, like I, I think that you're always learning whether you're a veteran in the industry or you're new, there's mm -hmm. always, there's always something new. There's always ways to be better, you know? And I think that's really important for anybody to know. Cause I think it makes acting or any kind of art, you know, mm -hmm. singing, acting, writing, whatever you're interested in, I think it makes it seem a lot less intimidating because it's mm -hmm. like, oh, even the people that have been doing it forever still have things to learn. Absolutely. You know? I, this, we are so lucky in this job because we do get to work literally alongside other actors. And so you're constantly mm -hmm. surrounded by it. And you're con like, if, if you're working in an office, you don't know what the other person's doing. Like you're not, you know, they can help you, but not really as opposed to being on set, I think, just be constantly aware of what's going on, of what, and not even just actors, like crew mm -hmm. members, what they're doing with the camera, which will help you just know where to stand, how to work with the camera. Yeah. Lighting, how they light, just be always, you know, aware and, and, you know, you can always learn, even if it's, even if the project brings you one little advice, that little advice can go such a long way in that little tip or, Again, just seeing how my coworkers were working on were working on set this summer was so interesting to me, um, mm -hmm. and I picked up on all these little details that might not help me for my next job or might not help me for the next five years, but it's still like key information that I think will last a lifetime. So I think whenever you're able to pick mm -hmm. up on stuff, just always kind of yeah. Try. Well, yeah, I think that it's just important to know that you're forever a student. And you're always learning. And even if you pick up, like you said, one little nugget, that little nugget can help you in 10 years. It's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. Like you can, you can literally just, I've, I've done that where I do a project and I'm like, oh, that was so interesting what that actor did. And then I don't think about it. And then like three, four years later, I'm like, oh, I remember when that actor did that. And I kind of want to do it now. Like I want to try that. It's just, it's, it's interesting, like how your brain can absorb things. And then, and then, you know, you can, you can revisit it so much mm -hmm. later than when you initially like observed it it's um, yeah, cool. in a, weren't in a position to understand it or you know right apply it to whatever you're doing and then as you change and evolve and grow you're like oh this now makes total sense yeah so it doesn't make sense or it feels like weird when you're i don't know wherever you are in your life that it won't later on so yeah yeah, yeah i think um i yeah. like i like thinking of like every time i do Every time I talk with somebody, I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's so cool what you kind of end up plucking out of the conversation. And I feel like with this conversation, I'm like, oh, you're forever a student. Like, you're always learning. That's been mm -hmm. a really cool takeaway because it's something that we often forget, that it's okay to be making mistakes 
and oh, to absolutely. be learning all and the time. It is. I have a hard time with that particular thing. Like, it's mm-hmm. not that I'm going to make mistakes, but not to be scared to look ridiculous. Like, right. not. It, we're always because there's so many eyes on us when we're doing things, and like whether it's an interview or whether it's you know trying out a new scene. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels very scary to have all these eyes on you and you feel so judged. But we're all human and we literally, I mean, it's so cliche, but we are all humans. We, we all make, we mistakes. are <laughs> totally okay. And those mistakes or, or that little, maybe you tried it this way and it was really weird. No yeah. one's be like, Oh, you're stupid for trying it that way. They'll be like, Oh, well she tried something and yeah. then you can just try something else if it didn't work out. Yeah, exactly. It's just letting go of, of, of your ego and just understanding that you will not be perfect 99% of the time. And even when you think you were perfect, there's no such thing. It's just maybe you were satisfied with what you did. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just kind of, I, I don't know, it's very freeing to just let go of that idea of being perfect and understanding that you're going to make a fool out of yourself. And that's totally fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. Um, yeah, this has been such a great conversation, Sophie. Thank you so much. I love, like, I love that we've gotten to talk about all these things. I haven't talked to you in forever, and here we are doing it in front of <laughs> tons of people, but it's fun um, nonetheless. It was, yeah, it was very nice to chat with you. I really hope that we get to work together someday. I'd love for you to direct me or... I know. I would love that. I know. Let's put that out there for all the industry people. Sophie, Nalise, and Isabel Odovich would love to work together. Yes. So I'm <laughs> learning your company... Well, your production company has taken off. I remember years and years and years ago you started talking about it. So it's very impressive to see that something's going to come out very soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Soph. I Yeah, well, actually, on that note, Sophie's show is going to be coming out uh, November 14th, mm-hmm. Yellow Jackets. And just just a little – I'm not really allowed to say this, but we're going to be announcing the release date for The Accursed uh, on Friday. And I'm just going to say that it's going to be released somewhere around Sophie's show. So um, that's all I'm going to say for now. And um, tune in, you know, Wednesdays for more chats like these. And thank you again, Sophie. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye.